What up, what up? Welcome to the Crown of Stitch podcast. Here to talk about some fitted, some snapbacks. Got myself, Nick Ingvall, and my guy, Keith. We've got a special guest today, John Ratner, who you might know from the podcast Sneaker Dads. Also a big fitted guy. Longtime sneakerhead, been a part of the community. He's been on with me multiple times on uh, you know, various things that we've done, sneaker combos a couple of years ago, I guess. It seems like it was much more recent, but... Welcome to the show, John. Keith, how you doing? How you guys doing? Doing well, man. Super excited for today's episode. So looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Me too. Appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, talk with you guys a lot. So it's cool to do it on uh, on here. Yeah, make it make it a little more official. You know, like <laughs> I think, you know, we, we've we crossed paths and talked. I don't even remember the first time we talked, but you and I had phone calls. Yep six seven eight years ago now probably it was a long time ago yeah i was in a different career then and, yeah uh, and uh we've we've got a lot of places since then and uh and here we are so it's cool that uh you guys are doing this i'm a i'm an avid listener and uh and uh you know produce some 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 podcast content on my own so it's cool yeah man it's great to have you um so we start out usually by talking about what we picked up recently. So you got anything that you want to share with us? Sure. I have a few things. Um, I have to say, uh, some of them might be a little bit older. Being in Canada, I'm from Toronto. We have a little bit of problem. Some places don't actually ship here. And I know you guys don't want to hear me complaining. But the other thing is like shipping and duties costs. So what I do is I have a U.S. post office box. And I get about, I shouldn't say, but, you know, like usually wait till I get about 15, 20. And then I uh, I bring them all in together. So some of these are a little older, except for this one. This one just came in uh, recently from that uh, Lids Hat Drop um, collection. I actually just grabbed the um, the other one. Uh, <laughs> you know, I watched that show so long ago. Um, the, the one with the uh, different materials. It's the what is that? The um, I wish I knew. So is that the Omar one? Omar, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with the rainbow. I haven't got it in yet, um, but I thought that one. I, I hesitated, but they were they were they were sitting, so I went for that one. And I think I'm going to like that one more than this uh, script. This one I got in a trade. Oh, um, nice. So I, I started trading hats now. There's some, you know, some forums and things like that. So um, started doing that because I definitely have enough to spare. Um, this one I want to say toppers, but I forget. I'm not that guy who knows where he gets stuff, minor league. I'm the guy who forgets. This is way too much. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> for you, Cavs. I know I've been spending a lot of money with them. So this was, um, forget the hook, but uh, a nice one. You don't usually see that Philly script over the top of the side patch, too. That's kind of unique. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess it's a pinwheel. You also don't see too many pinwheels. Yeah. We did it. We did a pinwheel. I'll talk about later, but um, um, don't have too many Astros hats. But I had to get my uh, first prototype, and um, my friend uh, Diggy's Caps went to Buffalo. He lives in St. Catharines, pretty close by. So he runs. Yeah. He does nice. sort of border runs for us to Buffalo <laughs> at the New Order, New Era store. He hooked up a lot of people. So I have to thank him. My first Bison's. And uh, that new era store in Buffalo is doing a lot of, I know a lot of people are doing them, but that's the closest place to me to get a bison. So uh, yeah, those are just a few of my recent ones. Yeah. Those, some good ones. It's it's funny. We were, we were talking on the last, on the last show. Um, you know, it's, it's so hard to know what's going to sell out and what's not, you know, like, like, I feel like I am on the opposite wave of everyone where I'm like, Oh, that's going to be gone quick. And it sits. And then I'm like, oh, that'll sit. I'll get it tomorrow or the next day. How many of the hats that you're picking up do you think are, or what percentage I should say, are like after the release date? You know, because like you say, you've got a lot of, you got a lot of workarounds to get the, the stuff to begin with. So I can only imagine, you know, like it's probably, it it probably pushes you from away from like, you know, buying everything right on release date too, because you're like, okay, well, you know, do I, do I, you know, when am I going to get this? Am I going to be patient enough for it to, you know, get to the box and then go pick it up and those kind of things. Cause it's gotta be probably a higher priority for you for picking stuff up too. 
I mean, it's nice because I, I I can wait and kind of it all comes together. It's like Christmas, you know, uh, it's like a big, big unboxing, but uh, I don't have to pick it up, luckily. So um, they ship it. It's actually oh, nice. all the way in uh, New Hampshire. So uh, it's just a, a reshipping service. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, I don't know if we'll talk about this later, but that that sort of hunt has totally replaced sneakers for me. Um, I still buy sneakers. I don't go for new releases of sneakers unless it's something really good. I don't even enter raffles. I, I don't. I just don't need them. I just don't want any more sneakers. I'll pick up something. Oh, you know, there's a, you know, I picked up an ACG shoe, but it was sitting. It wasn't. But with yeah. hats, I'm I'm on top of some of these releases. You okay. Know, okay. People will do the countdown clocks and <laughs> and yep. you know you see it in the stories. That helps me a lot. And yeah, I'm I'm there a lot of the time, just like it used to be with sneakers, and it still is for a lot of people with sneakers. But uh, I also, um, you know get the itch let's say and then uh you know we'll go on a site and look for things but you asked about things that people are going for and and things that other people aren't i i'm starting you know i'm kind of it you know kind of trying to figure this hat thing out like i thought i did with sneakers a little more as i get deeper and deeper um and i feel like it's a lot of the store based you know we talk a lot about hat club yeah. and things selling out a hat club it's i think hat club's a different animal because it's so big but I yeah. think at least with some of the smaller shops that are maybe getting one or two size runs, like, you know, I mentioned like for you caps or some of the New York based ones, I feel like it's anything a store drops. Sometimes people are after and, and some of these hats are just not that nice and they're yeah. gone. And it's kind of like, wow, that sold out. And then I can get this really kind of like clean classic, you know, like a green, green or gray under with like, you know, a dope combo up top and kind of like a timeless hat that's really nice that anyone would want any day and it sits maybe they're produced in higher numbers again i haven't figured it out but part of me thinks it's the stores too and people sleep on sleep on other stores but i think that's a that's that's those days are numbered of sleeper stores yeah i mean and it is interesting because like it's almost like you haven't reached it's it's very similar to sneakers it's like some of the stores haven't quite reached the the global audience, right? Like, you know, it used to be that you could, you could kind of follow a local or semi-local shop or even, you know, something that was semi-local in another area and get access to those shoes, you know, still even after a release date. But now like the exposure level for sneakers is like, everybody has a list of these are all the places it's coming out at. And with hats, to me, at least, it seems like, there's a lot of those like nuanced kind of like, like you said, New York has a lot of places that are, they get a good little run of, of, you know, colors or, or, you know, themes or whatever they're going to release. And like, maybe not as many people know about it, but it, it does feel like those days are kind of dwindling. Yeah. And, you know, I think whether it's um, a collab or just kind of like a, a themed pack, I think maybe those ones they're doing smaller numbers. Maybe they're a little bit more risky if you're doing like, you know, like a Simpsons thing and maybe it's already been done or you're doing some really loud colors, you know, you probably just more experiment with that in terms of numbers. Uh, again, I'm, I'm still a rookie in terms of learning how the industry works, but I do feel like, um, yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly getting harder and it's kind of like, Oh, did you hear about this shop? And it's like two weeks later, they're selling out in my group chat today. People were kind of saying, yeah, you know, I don't really like how this shop does it. It's like I said, I said, well, what, what can we do? What, 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 what would you like? What, what would you not personally? Like I was playing devil's advocate and it's like, I don't know what I would do. I just want the hat. It's yeah. the same thing with yeah. sneakers, right? You, no one has any answers. It's like, you're doing a raffle. You're doing first come first serve. It's like, no one's ever happy. Right. Unless they get the hat or yep. shoes. <laughs> exactly. Yep. It's kind of funny yeah. how you mentioned too, about like, you know, hats overtaking sneakers because the same thing happened to me too. It's like I used to be ready for every drop, entering a whole bunch of raffles and whatnot. And, you know, I was like, well, hats, hats are cheaper. You know, I can buy a hat for $50, $60, but I don't know if the justification is there or not, but I'll pick up five or six hats in between every sneaker that I buy. So it doesn't really make too big a difference, uh, you know, financially. I'm still spending the same amount of money. It's just, especially after, like I said, starting doing this podcast is just like the focus has just kind of shifted there's so many hats too you know i don't know about a dry spell and shutdowns of factories i mean we had a little experience with that you hear about that but yeah. it's certainly i can't 
keep track of the hats. Sneakers, I felt like I always could, even before the pandemic when things slowed down. Well, actually, I actually don't think they slowed down in sneakers with with, uh, with shipping. I think things maybe got delayed, but um, you know, the amount of hats that come out, if you just look every night on some of these aggregators, it's it's unbelievable. And uh, it's very hard to uh, to keep it at that level that even at the worst I ever was with sneakers, I, I'm better at, a little better at hats now because I have no space, literally. I'm, I'm tapped out. Like I'm not just saying that. I know everyone always says that. I would have to get another one of those Amazon racks and like my family would just, like, w- w- <laughs> you're filling up another one of those. So I, I mean, I only have, you know, one and a half or one and a three quarters, but any, I digress, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard to uh, keep it under that sneaker budget. If there yeah. was one. Yep. Totally. <laughs> so I, I got to ask you what, well, what's, what are you wearing? Like you're, you're obviously from Toronto. You got a blue Jays hat on. Yeah. Uh, this is the um, blinky. I think it's called with the pink under under visor um lids pick up nothing crazy i got a few from this actually they were dropped online i think on lids you probably guys probably saw months ago one of those weird scenarios where something dropped online and then three months later it's in store i picked up the expos version which i think is nicer it's it's the best one of these and then i just grabbed the la it's kind of like going to lids use my discount you know couldn't resist it so one of my favorite collections of i guess it's this year don't remember when they dropped online probably early this year yeah well so i i uh, you know i'm just wearing like kind of like my standard standard giants hat this is the jackie robinson edition um from this year but i, I asked too because we've had the conversation a lot where like keith is in the bay as well i'm in sacramento you know i'm i'm just a diehard giants fan like baseball is probably you know one step above sneakers for me in like terms of like the love and the family and the ties that I have to it. But I typically don't wear anything, any baseball, like major league teams. I don't really wear any of the other teams. I, I pretty much stick to the giants. I have a handful of minor league teams and I've got like, you know, some A's stuff, some local teams, but do you, well, obviously you've shown a bunch of them. So you're kind of all over the place. Any kind of, any kind of limits to what you're going to wear versus, you know, favorite teams in that i'm embarrassed to say this because on opening day this year i posted a hat and and i'm i'll be straight up i'm more about matching you know i come down here i got my sneakers and my hats usually pick out a hat i haven't worn yet because i have a bunch that are new and then find a pair of sneakers to match it you know take the pick or not take the pick but you know um it's fun i like it um but on opening day i grabbed and the two teams i really don't like to buy hats from are the Yankees and the Red Sox. Um, long time, you know, a lot, a lot of pe- a lot of teams hate <laughs> cities. Cities fans hate them, but Toronto is obviously rivals. And um, I posted a photo in the morning, and someone said, "You know who we're playing today on opening day?" <laughs> and that shows how serious of a baseball fan I am. But um, so I don't. I do have much less than them. Those are the really only ones I care about. I try now to pay attention to the schedule. But what's funny, and I don't know if it has anything to do with hats. I'm going to say it doesn't, but maybe it will, will credit hats a little bit. My son, 10 years old, never was into baseball. We've been to the occasional game. Now he's a baseball fiend. It's actually probably because of the show on his Nintendo Switch, the video game. Yeah. He is obsessed with baseball. We went today. We had to get a new bat because he dented the old one by hitting you know, too many. You know, I don't think it was a softball. But anyway, he is out there all day now, wants to play baseball plays a video game, is into hats. So I don't know what it is, but now I have to know because we're watching yeah, a J yeah. game at night. And I was always the kind of guy who would flip through and then like, hey, can we watch whatever, honey? Like, we'll flip back. Yep. Never really cared. Go to like a couple games, leave early, drink beers. When I was a kid, yeah, I jumped on the bandwagon. When the Jays were good, we'd go to games. I played baseball. But in my adult life, I've always been just basketball. I don't even watch hockey. So uh, baseball, my son, thanks to him, he's bringing me back into it. And uh Maybe I'll uh, be more careful with the hats, but not too careful. <laughs> and that's, too- I mean, that's pretty awesome, man. And and honestly, like it's it's never that serious. I, I think that you know, as much as I love baseball, man, it can be such a a slow and just boring sport sometimes. So you know, and and it takes a lot of time commitment. You know, it's like if you want to be a fan of baseball, you've got to watch 160 some odd games. If you want to be a fan of basketball, you've got to watch half that, and it's way more exciting. And it usually takes half the time for each game so it's 
I definitely understand that. But that's really cool that that you're getting to kind of like reconnect with it, you know, and totally. and have him along with you on the journey with the hats too. I mean, it makes okay. it more fun. It makes it more fun. I mean, I have, you know, I have other things to do. I have a job, I have a podcast, I have a family. So, you know, to sit through a baseball game at night, if, if, if we're watching TV and he doesn't want to watch it or my daughter doesn't want to, you know, I'm not following the game there. They're always at night. So, you know, yeah. the family sort of dictates if they're willing to f- turn off jeopardy and, and watch a ball game, you know, that's fine with me. We never have until this year. And now, uh, now we're in it. So, it, it coincides nicely with uh, my other hobby. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, can your son fit any of your hats? The, is, is there some swapping and 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 borrowing going on <laughs> in the getting, household? It's getting dangerous. It's funny. He he was this. You know, last year I thought he was a three eighths. Then I started buying him some. And you know, hats fit weird always. And uh, I'm a three quarters. And he put on a couple of. He can now wear seven and a halfs. And um the three eights I've, I've given to people or sold. So he's growing like a weed and I don't know how your head grows, but I know his feet and head are growing because he is 10. He's a big boy. He is 10 and he's wearing my wife's uh, seven and a half men's shoes almost like, you know, her, her ultra boost tight shoes like that. And the other day he put on one of my five eights. Cause I, I used to think I was, was like the same with sneakers. You know, you think you were a different size or, or sometimes I have to buy a five eights cause I really want something, put it on. He's like, dad, I can wear this. And his eyes lit up. I was like, he's never really shown that much interest in my sneakers. He's like, kind of like, I'll sell these dad. I won't wear them. Yeah. But, but with the hat, his eyes lit up because he does wear a fitted almost every day now. Cause uh, and he has a couple snapbacks and we joke about that too, but um, he fit into a five eights and I, and I put a little uh, sticky, uh, like I used like the foam, little foam inserts or whatever to, to make it fit a little better. And he was pretty stoked. And he, he said, dad, you know, give me all your five eights. So <laughs> I gave him about four or five, not all of them. Hopefully he doesn't hear this. There's a few I stashed away, you know, stretched. Them. <laughs> He's not ready yet. He's still 10. I mean, I told him he could, he can mash a hat easier than you can mash a pair of sneakers like sneakers i don't care but a hat i mean he was playing around with it. i was like look what you just did you dented it he's like i don't care dad i was like okay <laughs> then you're not getting the good ones yet yep <laughs> oh man that's awesome man that's awesome um keith what 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 are you rocking what'd you cop recently oh um what i'm wearing is the cobra kai from lids nice i forgot exactly when these dropped this was months back um much like you john um i'll wear pretty much almost every team i i don't really have a problem with uh with the yankees or red Sox. you know they're on the east coast not my favorite teams but i feel like especially like a lot of the red Sox hats that have came out um i like a lot of them you know like there was that uh that collab that pierre did with fan treasures the the chowder house one and just overall, I, I like a lot of the Red Sox hats, so I'll I'll wear pretty much whatever. Um, besides, of course, a, a Dodgers hat. That's that's not going on my head. Uh, what about John? Do you have any Dodger hats? That's yeah, I'll wear question. Dodgers. Um, uh, so, sorry to tell you, the other one, the other one I wasn't so into was Houston for obvious reasons, and I've since broken down. As you saw, I have about two or three Houston hats, and my my son called me on that one. He was like, "What happened to your Houston <laughs> objection?" Like, and I was like, oh, "They're nice." Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's all good. Uh, for pickups, this is funny too because I was talking to you about this recently, John. As I wasn't able to get my hands on a uh, any of the COVID mass pirates, and I finally was able to get one. Uh, this was from Sports World. Uh, this is, I think, the Sunset Gradient Collection. And one of the things that I like about this hat that I didn't notice at first was instead of a batterman, it has the it has the pirates logo on the back. It's kind of getting washed out, but it's like a baby blue brim with a, this is like a, like a tannish color on the, on the crown, but uh, really happy to finally have one. It's been uh, months and months of striking out. So that definitely felt good to have that in the collection now. Nice. Yeah, that's a good one. That colorway is, is super dope. So going back to your Astros thing, my, uh, my pickup, most recent pickup, I should have opened this so you don't get this whole. I don't know. Maybe the ASMR experience is actually good. I don't know. It but, uh, I finally picked up a San Jose Giants fitted, which is, right. you know, like for a Giants fan is like not special in a sense that like you kind of, if you're a fan of baseball, you end up picking 
teams related to your favorite team or whatever. And so like, it's just been on my list for a long time. I had one years and years and years ago, but I wore it to play baseball in. So it just got destroyed, you know, but what's interesting is like the Astros is a great example. The Pirates is a great example. The Tigers. I think like fitteds almost have like the nostalgia is almost harder hitting when it comes to fitteds than it was for sneakers to me, because there are so many like, you know, old pirates logo, uh, old angels logos, a lot of the old Philly stuff. Like there's just, uh, you mentioned the expos. Like I absolutely love the expos logo. Like, I just think it's, it's one of my favorite logos of all time. And I think like the pinwheel back in the day is just like guys like Tim Raines and, you know, you just have these memories. And part of it is because at that age, like baseball cards were a big deal. Right. So like I was learning about these people and players and athletes that I had really no business knowing anything about, but like, you know, it's like, like Keith brought up Tim Salmon on, on a, on a episode. And it's like, that ties into so many memories for me. So it's almost like, like the nostalgia is like just so much more in my face on top of all the various logos, right? It's like, there's layers to each team's logo history. So like you get to you start looking at that stuff and you're like, Oh, I really like that. Or I really like that patch, man. It, it just like hooks me. I can't like, I mean, it's hard for me to not buy things when I see like a good combination. Is it, do you, do you find that same kind of thing, John, with like some of the stuff that you're picking up? Cause like the Astros one you shared was like, is one of those ones where like, if, if the Astros weren't, you know, cheating, like I see that and I think of Nolan Ryan and like Nolan Ryan was like my favorite pitcher as a kid or one of my favorite pitchers I had is I is like, I got his baseball autograph. Like that's what I asked for. And like years later, my grandparents got it for me, but like, I don't know. Is that the same for you? It's funny you mentioned Nolan Ryan because my son and I were playing the show today and we discovered these all-star type teams. They're not. And they're like great teams. And, and we had never played with them. He's only had the game for a few weeks. And and, uh, and we found these teams and they had all these guys. They had Nolan Ryan, they had Ken Griffey. And I, and he he kind of got really excited, but I got so, so nostalgic. And they also had like a super old time one with Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth and things. But I picked the one with all the guys from my kid and, and from my childhood. And, and, you know, when I was thinking of when I saw Nolan Ryan, I was like, uh, yeah, I have the as like that totally connected. Yeah. But yeah. the other good thing that the stores do is they tie, you know, when they're storytelling, they'll use like not always, but they'll use an image of a, you know, a, uh, you know, a Mike Schmidt or, or whatever. And then you're like, okay, now I see it. So, you know, yeah. maybe we don't need that image, but when it's there, it really, it really helps and like tweaks the nostalgia. Um, but yeah, totally. I, I mean, I totally just, someone the other day showed me a hat that was hooked to the Royals. And I said, and I said, I used to hate the Royals, but <laughs> That's a really nice hat. And I have a couple of Royals hats. And like when I was a kid, like the Royals were no, no, there would I would never touch a Royals hat. I probably wouldn't have touched any other hat when I was a kid, but different time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It's crazy. Um, so you have some experience in in basically making your own hats, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh what would you would you say it was still? Yep. So there's a, a few hat, uh, a few hat um, stores. They're online, all in Toronto and the Canada's few outside of Toronto. So we're kind of making the Canadian scene is kind of um, blowing up, almost is fair to say, and still is sort of at the forefront of that. And uh, the um, founder of Still Shaheen is a friend of mine from the sneaker world. Of course, he um, he uh, you know has been in the Toronto sneaker scene for a long time, and that's how I got to know him. And he'd been doing still for a few years now. And, um, you know, as my podcast, Sneaker Dads, picked up steam, he was a guest on it. And he knew I was into um, more into fitteds and the connection between hats and sneakers is obvious. Um, good friend of mine, Andrew Kahn, uh, Akon from Great Ones. He, um, Akon Ones from Great One, he is sort of the design uh, expert of if, if he and I are a team, which we are. Um, he's the design expert. He knows all the logos, so I have to credit him. He's he does all that hard work. I I do. Um, I'm sort of an idea guy. Maybe we 
we sort of asked Shaheen, we said, hey, what do you think of this idea? And, you know, pandemic being what it is, it took a while, but we got really lucky. We wanted to do um, a combo, um, um, great father-son duos hat. Uh, we didn't actually think it was going to be time for Father's Day. It was, it was planned way before. But as Father's Day kind of approached, we said, hey, this would be perfect for Father's Day. So we pitched the idea to him. He liked it. Um, considering what's going on in production of garments and things like this, I think we were really lucky. It went really smoothly. And, um, you know, he gave us this opportunity. And I can't thank, thank him enough because, you know, I just have a podcast. I have no no experience designing any clothes except for I did some fitteds of my own uh, through New Era with my Sneaker Dad's logo, but totally different ball game with uh, MLB. So it, it was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, Andrew is uh, Andrew again is a credit I can I could show them for people who haven't seen them. Still, still is still a little bit still still a little bit of a slept on shop for some people. I think the hardcores in the hat world definitely know, but not everyone. So, yeah, I mean, I I just found out about it seeing seeing your posts about it. So yeah, I mean, l- like I said, there's a lot of hat shops as we all know, um, but uh, still is one definitely not to sleep on. They have releases most weeks. Um, have a lot of um, done a lot of things that people haven't. Um, they're really early, if not the first, on like peach undervisors. They do a lot of cords. I think um, might might give them credit for um, helping the cord or starting the cord wave um they do a lot of a lot of great work and basically a quick story of the design is is you know y- you come up with sort of a concept we wanted to have a story i know not everyone has a story behind a hat but given the father and son duos we picked um four hats he let us do four hats we we're really lucky and um and um the idea is have um a father and a uh, a father and a son. I'll start with, we were talking about Griffey earlier. So this is the Griffey. It is obviously a um, Reds hat um, with the Seattle Mariners colors. So um, we got the, uh, actually both of them played on the Reds. So this was a little different yeah. situation, both Ken Griffey Jr. Senior, but uh, Junior Junior's colors on Seattle and dad's um, team, I guess for the most part, but both of their team. So this is the Griffey. Um, yeah, the, yeah, this is, um, Andrew's favorite and he did his best to, to, uh, coordinate everything from, um, in terms of dates, in terms of side patches and things like that. Um, he said, John, do you like these side patches? And he explained it to me why, but he really did, did all the work with those. And, um, and, um, I was really, we were really lucky how they turned out. And they also came out a week before the Father's Day, which is just luck. Um, Shaheen probably did something to make that happen, but, uh, that's beyond my, that business expertise beyond my, beyond my knowledge. Uh, this one, Nick, I'm sure, yeah, um, unless it. you, unless you're offended by the pirates colors, uh, we have the bonds, um, with the, um, with the, um, with the giant's hat and, um, some like OG nods to the, under visor that they actually wore and um side patch and again um legendary father son duo in uh in baseball we um sort of went uh you know d- digging through all the father son combinations there sure is a lot uh but to pick the best ones I, I think it was kind of kind of relatively easy uh especially with those two and then with the Montreal and Toronto con- connection of the Guerrero uh, Vladimir Guerrero Sr. and Junior. I'll show these ones together because um, they go together. Blue Jay colorway, alternate Blue Jay colorway on the Vlad. I called it the Impaler. No one liked the Impaler name, but <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, gray under. And then the Vladimir uh, Guerrero Jr. on the Expos pinwheel. This is actually my favorite, uh, despite the fact that it'll probably get dirty. Um, yeah, again, I think they turned out really well. The reception was amazing. Um, yeah, you guys did yeah. a great job. Thank great you. Job. Yeah. Very excited. I, still excited. I need to start scouring eBay, eBay cause I'm, I'm still mad. I, I missed the drop on that one. So I, I was at work and, uh, I still need to get my hand, my hands on that bonds one right there. Cause it's, 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 a be- they're all beautiful, but of course being a giant's hat, that one definitely, uh, speaks to me the most. Yeah, yeah it's and it's very it was very hard and you know um 
us being our first club, they're not going to make, you know, you know, it's a little bit of a departure if you look at what he does um, from what they usually do. So, you know, not going to make thousands of the hat, obviously. So it was a little bit tougher to get than usual. And, and I, I, um, I only got from myself and my son, I, I was unable to hook up anyone because, um, you know, I'm not just saying this, but still, and I know another, uh, other retailers try to do this. They try and spread the love and hook up the community. You know, you can't always see the same people or give invoices to the same people because people will get upset and they will give up and they'll go somewhere else. So I think they do a really good job and I know it's really hard. So, um, yeah, if anyone's wondering why they didn't get one from me, it's because I didn't get enough for me. I wanted I wanted doubles and triples of all of them, but it's it's tough, you know. Like I we've talked about that at, at length on on the sneaker history podcast, and it's you know you you want to you want to you want to be fair, but you also want to make sure that like the people that have supported you get you know a shot at it, right? You you want to make sure that like people that worked on it with you get a shot at it. So it's just. Yeah, it's it's such a tough thing, man. It's such a tough thing, and I, I think like you know, I, I know you well enough to know that you want to be able to hook up everybody and make sure that everybody that is interested gets it. But you know, nobody's gonna take take it the wrong way. Nobody's gonna have hard feelings if they know you. You know, so yeah. I, I just really like you guys. Just like absolutely killed it with that whole concept. Super dope that it came out. You know, at that time too, just to, perfect for Father's Day. So. It was cool. One more thing on that, because, you know, one of the things, reasons why he, he does it and he was, I still felt like he was hooking me up like he would on, you know, like a release that's happening next week or whatever, <laughs> um, um, because he was like, there was only a limited amount. Uh, but um, one of the things when I was talking about the group and not, you know, people kind of, oh, is this the right way to do it? One of the things he has to combat is bots. And I know a lot of the stores have to combat the bots. And, and he sends out invoices and he does like the comments below thing. And that's to weed out bots because if yep. you're invoicing everyone and, and you know, picking picking who essentially, and, and then I think he leaves a size round or two or three or whatever, how much he has just for the first come first serve, it's sort of, you know, yeah, if someone, you know, bought four hats last week and was begging and you want to hook them, yeah, sure. Um, or if you did like a, they do, you buy this hat, you could get an invoice. Like it's super hard to get that organized. So yeah. some people just don't care, right? Some people don't care to fight the bots like we know in the sneaker world. Some people don't want to invest in Shopify. And, you know, again, not to, because they're not the only ones doing it, but it's 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 really because, and it's smart business too, to get people, um, to spread the love so i mean i appreciate it as a customer too because uh you know this totally. was the this was only how i worked on so far <laughs> yep yep totally um, john i know you had mentioned the the community that you have up there in canada is there any differences that you notice uh up in canada compared to what you see over here in the u.s or is there anything you could touch on as far as that do you notice any differences is it all i know you said canada's starting to kind of boom a little bit up there as far as the fitteds and stuff but is there any differences you see well i'm sort of engulfed in the u.s community so i can see you know on like discord and things like that um so i i see what's going on there i think it's um largely the difference is sort of availability we have fewer lid stores i mean um i know lids aren't in every city in the u.s but um i mean we have lots but the what comes in is very limited we'll get you know, mostly J stuff and a couple of teams. We don't, you know, I was in New York recently and I was in New Orleans and I, I went to Chicago. I went to all three stops and kind of sounds like a sneaker trip, but it was more like a, now a hat trip. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't really, but it, it turned out to be that. But, um, you know, and I, and I saw the stores and they were significantly um, um, different stock and, and more selection. And like I said, some stores we can't even get to ship here. Like you mentioned, uh, fan treasures and pro image. I can't even use my credit card and ship to my PO box. But I mean, as far as the culture, I think, um, you know, in places like New York, it's been hardcore heavy for years and years. And I think elsewhere, we're following the sort of same trends. Like, you know, we all had uh, whatever number of hats in our closet since we were little, whether it was five or it was 20, or if it was 100. Um, few of us had hundred hats fitted hats when we were when we were young but i think it's following sort of the same same trajectory as you know the majority of us um outside of those um long time you know hat 
meccas, but we have collectors here, at least in my group chat, that have been doing it forever, like 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 you guys have talked about, and uh, and you know you discover, oh, okay, this guy this guy's been collecting hat fitteds for for twenty five years, and uh, you know as long as I've been collecting sneakers, and it, it's cool because you know I never thought that world existed. I just thought it was only people collecting sneakers, but people collect comics and and hats, and I don't know, probably socks, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. You know, we were just talking about it in the last episode. It's like you just get, you know, people just get to nerd out and then you find the nerd, the people that nerd out on the same things that you nerd out on, you know, and then it's like, OK, new friends, new ideas, new, you know, like, what are we going to do? Like, we're just going to do some cool stuff together. And, you know, we don't you don't even know. Right. You just like you, you get I just I love when people are passionate about stuff enough to, you know, like get into the nerdiness of like side patches and pins, which we talked about last week. It's like, you know, it's just like a, it's, it's so in the weeds for the average person that just sees somebody wearing a hat and doesn't think twice about it. But then it's just like sneakers, right? If you see somebody with a, a lace swap or something like that, that's like, Oh, they went that extra. They put that extra effort in to actually be, you know, to be a slightly different, you know, and you know that they're paying attention to a lot of things when you see just that, that little thing, it's, it's pretty, it's fun. You know, it, to me, it's just, it's just so fun. I just love all this stuff and love, you know, meeting people like yourself and, and Keith and like, you know, just through whatever those shared passions are. And then you end up finding other things that you're into, you know, it's like, I mean, sneakers and, and fitteds, you know, like, but yeah, it's, it's uh, always a good, always a good thing to me. So we're we're getting pretty close to wrapping up on time wise. Any other questions you have, Keith? Before before we get into uh, some kicks and fits. Uh, the only other thing I was thinking about is I know that you had uh, Pierre from Views from the Vault on on Sneaker Dad's podcast, and I've seen you on a couple of the IG lives with him and uh, Jason and Leon and whatnot. And I was kind of curious how you got hooked up with them, and it it seems like you know you said you haven't been collecting for a super long time, but you got pretty engulfed in and the whole fitted culture. So really fast too. So I was just kind of curious about uh, how that happened and how you kind of got hooked up with, with so many people in the hack community and not that long a time. Yeah. It was actually when still, um, when he opened that up, that's when I, I got it. It kind of, you know, I was kind of talking to him and he's like, you know, that's like, Oh, you know, a sneaker guy going into has like, what, what a shock really. Like it shouldn't have been right. <laughs> um, but as far as, as far as those guys, um, Leon actually lives in Toronto. So I think that might've been the connection there. I, I might've just jumped on a couple of their lives. Yeah. Pierre was on the podcast. Uh, so was Nick, as he mentioned. So if anyone missed those, please go listen to those. And, um, uh, but, um, um, we, um, yeah, I, I, I can't say I remember how I got on it. I must've just jumped on alive and uh you know maybe the toronto connection got me a little extra love from leon maybe i showed <laughs> one of his hats he does the, he designs hats both mlb hats and uh his own brand the capologist so it was probably a little bit of toronto love uh J jason jabs toronto pierre being a boston fan there's uh, obviously uh a little bit of a rivalry there but they're good guys and uh they do they're really <laughs> as you guys know they're super busy and very big on creating content and uh so shout out to them because uh they've embraced us they gave us a lot of you know shine on our on our collab and even down to like the pins we made leon shares them and they've been really nice and um yeah i just love jumping on i i jump on other people's lives now i'm kind of just you know just having fun with it nice, yeah that's nice. great man i gotta say that's that's always been something that i i don't know if it exists outside of toronto as much but man Toronto community wise is so supportive of everyone else in the community. I just like, I have to tip my cap to you guys. You got it. It's, it happens in sneakers. It happens in, in fitteds. I, I would imagine, you know, like I'm big into cars. I would imagine it's the same thing in the car scene up there. You know, it just, it, it just feels really special to me. And I, I, I don't know if it's just because I see so much of the, cattiness that exists in you know in sneakers and fit, a little bit in fitteds right now but like you know in in the states at least but i have to i have to give you guys 
flowers for that because it, it it always feels really genuine like everybody's just like wants to be doing something cool and wants to support the other people around them that are doing something cool yeah i'll i'll uh i'll say sure but on uh, sneakers i think we've seen we've seen the worst come out of people i haven't seen anything bad in hats yet um but uh you know we're i think the fourth biggest city in in north america i mean we have a very diverse population people from people collect you know not just jay's hats but you know i know, I know people only collect pirates hats and it's like what what are you doing living in Toronto? And and they just <laughs> yeah. like the design, you know. So there's there's something for everyone in Toronto. So uh, luckily, you know, <laughs> you've you've picked from the right group of uh, <laughs> of uh, friends and, and acquaintances. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a great town. Well, let's let's wrap up, kind of connecting the dots between, I guess, like our two podcasts and your podcast, and we'll do uh, a pair of kicks that you're going to match with some fit with a fitted. All right, you guys want me to go first? Go for it. This is uh, stolen from the IG, but I got a lot of compliments. So uh, I'll show off the uh, Purple Pigeons, I guess is the uh, official nickname, with a still hat. Uh, this is the, um, not the Grape Soda, Grape Crush, I think it was, a little while ago. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit colorblind, but I think it's close enough uh <laughs> both purple at least and uh, yeah i got a lot of compliments on this one uh still as big yeah. into the t-bird to uh muscle birds so um yeah this one uh this one one of my favorites so i don't like the bright colors too much but when the shoes match it's easy totally i i, I love that logo by the way it's one of my favorites if i was to wear teams other than the giants i i would definitely wear one of those one of these you want to go next keith <laughs> yeah oh I'll go ahead. Uh, you're making me realize too that I, I definitely need some more Blue Jays hats in the collection. Uh, since I had a Lids hat on, this is the uh, black color pop from Lids. And like you said, Nick, too, that uh, this was one of the ones that I expected to, to fly, you know, and I was able to pick that up a, a couple days after it dropped. So uh, these are a tiny bit beat, but these are, of course, classic Fred 11s, goes good with the. Uh, with the black color pop and the red of the, of the Red Sox hat. So that's what I got. It's a good one. Good one. Yeah. All right. Um, I am going to start with the shoe. So Fila Grant Hill. Nice. Old school. Um, Fila 96, I guess is what they call it now, but uh, pulled out the uh, New York Giants polo grounds. I don't know if you can see that side nice. patch there, but kind of old school. One of the places that when I lived in New York, I had to had to make sure I stopped by, get to see the little plaque and all that. Um, but, you know, just nostalgia again, nostalgia for me. Just I, I don't know what it is about it is, but man, it's taken me down like all sorts of winding roads back to years past for me. So, uh, but John, thanks for coming on. Uh, you know, we've been we've been talking about this for a while. I know Keith and I had been talking about this for a while, but we really appreciate you coming on and obviously want to kind of let you let everybody know how to find you and, and tell you, tell them about what you're, what you have going on so they can come check you out. Sure. Uh, you guys can check me out on uh, mostly on sneaker dads, Instagram page and the podcast is sneaker dads. That's it. There's another podcast with a similar name. I am just sneaker dads. Uh, Heads ain't ready is my personal Instagram, or at least my, uh, my shoe and hat Instagram. <laughs> and um, yeah, doing it every week still um, almost two years in. So uh, check it out if you haven't. Thank you guys for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Glad to uh, make it on. And I love what you guys are doing. So really appreciate you and keep it up. Of course, of course. We'll definitely uh, be in touch. We'll get, we'll get you back on. You know, maybe you'll have another still collab in the works down the road. You know, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> um, Keith, let, let everybody know how they can find you. Uh, you can find me on IG and Twitter at Keith the Sneak. Two uh, Ks on the end. Uh, crown stitch of course ig twitter everything and uh yeah go go check out sneaker dads i'm i'm an avid listener you do you do a great job john and uh you know even people that just started listening go back in the catalog a little bit because there's there's a lot of gems you might even uh hear nick on there <laughs> yeah not not just for dads also <laughs> yeah absolutely agree there's some there's some great conversations uh you know and props to you for for sticking with it man i know I know firsthand how hard it is to to keep going week after week. And 
yeah, I, I really enjoy the podcast. I'm listening to it regularly. So um, thank you everybody for listening. You can follow me at Nick Engvall on all the platforms, but like Keith said, more importantly, at Crown and Stitch everywhere. And we'll uh, upload this one to our YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, all those things. And we'll put a link to, to John's stuff in the description for you to connect with him. And uh, please go support him. We appreciate all of you. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace. Thanks,